In this video, we're going to learn how to implement the insertion sort algorithm in C++. The insertion sort algorithm can be used to sort an array of values. The values can be any type. So for example, integers, floating point numbers, or even things like strings. The algorithm works by building a sorted array one element at a time, similar to how many people will sort a deck of cards. The algorithm works on a sorted left-hand portion of the array and an unsorted right-hand portion of the array. With each step of the algorithm, the next element from the right-hand unsorted portion of the array is inserted into its correct position in the sorted left-hand portion of the array. Now initially, when the algorithm first begins, the first element in the array is considered to be the initial sorted portion of the array, because an array of one element is sorted by default. We then look at each element in the right-hand unsorted portion of the array one at a time, shifting it over into its correct position in the left-hand sorted portion of the array, making the left-hand sorted portion of the array one element larger with each step of the algorithm. We do this until we reach the end of the array and no more unsorted elements remain. Now initially in this example, six would be the sorted portion of the array. We would then look at the element five and insert it into its correct position in the left-hand sorted portion of the array. Then next, we would look at three and insert it into its correct position in the left-hand sorted portion of the array. And then we look at one and insert it into its correct position. Sometimes like one, if the element is less than all the elements in the sorted portion of the array, it will be inserted at the very front of the array. Sometimes an element like eight here doesn't need to move at all to go into its correct position. We call the element that we are currently looking at in the unsorted portion of the array, the key. In order to insert the key into its correct position in the sorted portion of the array, we continually shift over the elements in that left-hand sorted portion of the array by one index until we either reach the start of the array or we find an element in the sorted portion of the array that is less than or equal to the key, at which point we found the right spot for that key to be inserted. So here, three is less than our key four, so we found the spot where four belongs. Let's actually implement this algorithm in C++ now. So the first thing we'll do is declare an int array called a. We'll initialize this array with the unsorted values 8, 2, 7, 4, 5, 1, 9, and 3. Now there's eight values in that array. So we'll declare and initialize an int variable called length to 8. We'll create a function to perform the insertion sort algorithm. Up here we'll declare the function. We'll call the function insertion sort the function is going to have a void return type because the function is not going to actually return anything. It's going to modify the array that it's passed as an argument. Here we'll have the array itself. Int a is what we'll call that parameter. The function will also accept the array length as an argument. So we'll have here int length for that parameter. We can then define the function down here. We'll copy this and paste this here. And then we'll implement the algorithm by using a loop nested inside another loop. The outer loop is going to perform each major step of the algorithm by using a counter variable i to look at each key value from the unsorted portion of the array. The inner loop is going to use a counter variable j to help shift over the key value to its correct position in the sorted portion of the array. So first we'll create the outer loop with the counter variable i that's going to be initialized to one it's going to go up until the length of the array and we'll increment i by one with each loop iteration. We start i off at one, so that way the first key value we look at is the second element in the array. We're not going to look at this first element in the array. We're going to consider it to be already sorted because an array of one element is sorted by default. Then i is going to be incremented with each loop iteration and we're going to keep looking at that next element in the right-hand unsorted portion of the array until we reach the last element in the array. So next, we'll create the inner loop to shift that key value at the index i into its correct position in the sorted portion of the array. So here we'll have int key is equal to a at the index i to store the current key value into the variable key. Then we'll create a variable j to keep track of our position 
in that sorted portion of the array as we shift over values. So we'll have here int j is equal to i minus 1. Because the value 1 index to the left of the current key value index i is going to be that first value in the sorted portion of the array that we're going to compare the key to. Next, we'll make a loop to shift over the values to the right by 1 in that sorted portion of the array. So we'll have here while. Then in the loop, we'll have a at the index j plus 1 is equal to a at the index j. Then we'll have j is equal to j minus 1 to update the counter variable. So j is going to keep track of the index of the element that we're currently looking at in that left-hand sorted portion of the array. And the index j plus 1 is going to be 1 to the right of that current index j. And we're assigning to that index the value stored at the index j, which is going to have the effect of shifting that value over 1 to the right. Then we also decrement j by 1 with each loop iteration so that way we keep on shifting over the next element in the left hand sorted portion of the array. Now we're going to stop this process if we reach the start of the array. So, so long as j is greater than or equal to zero, we haven't yet reached the start of the array and we're going to keep this process going. We're also going to stop if we find a value at the index j that is less than or equal to the key. So, so long as we also have via and a at the index j is greater than the key, we're also going to keep going. So these conditions are going to determine when we found the right index to insert the key value at. Because if we reach the start of the array, that means the key value was smaller than all the elements in the sorted portion of the array. If the element at the index j is not greater than the key, we've found an element that's either less than or equal to the key and we know the key belongs at the index j plus 1, 1 to the right of that element. And that's actually the next thing we'll do, is down here, after this loop, we'll have a at the index j plus 1 is equal to that key value. Now, if we do reach the start of the array, it's going to be because j is no longer greater than or equal to 0. j is actually going to be equal to negative 1. So here, we're actually going to set a at the index 0 equal to the key in that case. So this is actually it. The algorithm is now implemented. Let's actually step through one execution of this inner loop to help us understand what's really going on. So here I'll paste in some example. Here we have an array. And the array has the values 2, 4, 7, 8, 5, 1, 9, 3. And the idea is that we're at this stage of the algorithm where the index of i is 4, and so our key is 5. And this here is the sorted portion of the array, and this here is the unsorted portion of the array. And because we set j to i minus 1, that means here j is going to have the index 3. So once this loop executes, j is going to be greater than or equal to 0, because j is 3. a at the index j is 8 which is greater than our key value, 5. So that means this loop body is going to execute. And we're going to store into the index j plus 1, which is going to be 4, the value stored at the index j. So we're going to take 8, and we're going to copy it here. Then in the next loop iteration, j is going to be decremented by 1. So now j is going to be 2. Then, in the next loop iteration, j is still going to be greater than or equal to 0. a at the index j is 7. And 7 is still greater than our key value, 5. So again, this loop body is going to execute. And we're going to store at the index j plus 1, which is now going to be 3, the value stored at the index j. So we're going to take 7, and we're going to copy it here. And again, j is going to be decremented. Now at this loop iteration, a at the index j is 4, and 4 is not greater than our key 5. So at this point, the loop is going to stop, and at the index j plus 1, which is going to be 2, we're going to insert our key value 5. 
So we've just completed one major step of the algorithm. And so hopefully that illustrates how the inner loop is going to work. Let's actually test out our function now. Up here in the main function, we'll call the insertion sort function and we'll pass it our array A and the length 8. Then down here, we'll create a loop to output our array values after they've been sorted. So we'll have here for int i is equal to 0, i is less than length, i++, plus plus, to go over each index in the array. Then in the loop body, we'll output the value at that index. So we'll have c out, and we'll output a open bracket, and then the current index i, followed by a close bracket, is equal to, then we'll output the value in the array at the index i, followed by an end line, so each array index and value outputs on a new line. Then we can save, compile, and run a program, and we'll see that our array values are sorted because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 9. Now, insertion sort can be very efficient at sorting very small arrays, but for very large arrays, we would want to use a different algorithm, such as, for example, quick sort or merge sort, because they would be much more efficient than using insertion sort. So this is how we can implement the insertion sort algorithm in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.